This is Dave Baker with the November 2021 Flash Report from LNWM. Uh, probably the biggest story of this month uh, came down in the last few days as we saw Q3 US GDP growth uh, come in at a disappointment. Uh, it was down at a 2% annualized pace from 6.7% the prior quarter. Uh, we saw a resurgence in COVID, of course, that really delayed businesses from reopening. Um, consumers dialed back their spending um, and the supply issue, uh, supply chain issues that we've talked about over the last several months uh, remain un uh, unsubsided. Meanwhile, uh, on a related basis, inflation uh, by any measure has remained elevated. Uh, the headline inflation figure was up uh, uh, over 5.4% year over year. You might think that would be a bad backdrop for U.S. stocks. Um, you would be surprised to know that the S&P 500 uh, returned uh, roughly 7% for the month, the strongest month of the year so far, and actually it's the strongest October in the last six years. Um, so while we have this difficult economic data, you can point to corporate earnings um, as the reason that we saw such strong performance. Um, to date, uh, the company's reporting for the third quarter, more than 86% have posted a positive earnings surprise, and really that's what's been uh, driving uh, such strong results. Overseas, um, I think inflation worries are the issue. Um, Non-U.S. markets gained, they were positive, but not quite so much um, as they did here in the U.S. Um, I think folks don't necessarily realize how much inflation is a, a global problem and that other countries are having to face um, the, the same issues, if, if not worse, than what we are. Um, so many other countries are looking at having to raise interest rates sooner than here in the U.S., and I think investors have been trying to digest the impacts of that on uh, local economies and markets. In bonds, interest rates uh, finished right about where they began, so we didn't see a lot of movement there. Um, although we did see foreign bond uh, yields rise, look to the previous comment as to reasons why that is. Um, and then in municipal bonds, in addition to some seasonal weakness, we also saw inflows dry up uh, into the asset class. And I think that's related to um, municipal investors getting less concerned about what might happen with the tax code and more concerned uh, about inflation themselves. In real assets, U.S. REITs crushed it. Um, they uh, uh, match the performance of the broader equity markets. Um, year to date, there's, it's, it's, performance has been a bit disparate. You have a sector like the office sector, which has faced the headwinds of uh, delays to back to office plans, et cetera. But meanwhile, you've got the um, industrial sector that is up more than 40% year to date. Um, uh, with the with businesses having to find parking places for all this inventory that they can't get to market because of all these supply chain issues. Um, looking forward, our concerns haven't really changed uh, that dramatically from uh, what we identified at the beginning of the year. Um, continue um, COVID headwinds are likely to continue to be um, uh, something that challenges us. Um, and the slowdown that we saw in Q3 GDP growth wasn't something that surprised us. Um, and higher inflation that has come alongside uh, that um, isn't something that has surprised us either. I think what is different now is that some of the inflation readings are starting to look less transitory and uh, more problematic on a few fronts. Um, one, a spike in energy uh, has really started to flow through every sector and has started to hit consumers directly in their pocketbooks. Um, and uh, the supply chain issues that we've seen, those have, are also looking like something that, as opposed to being wrapped up by the end of this year, is something that's going to stretch maybe even through all of 22 as well. So we see inflation as probably the greatest headwind to growth going forward, but we still see uh, the recovery continuing, maybe just at a slower pace and with a little bit more downside risk. Uh, in terms of what we're doing in portfolios, um, we, we bake in the possibility of inflationary environments when we design portfolios. You can rest assured of that. Um, we think we have the right positioning of real assets when you're talking about um, real estate, uh, commodities, infrastructure, et cetera, um, uh, uh, to help buffer portfolios and protect against the downside going forward. But that, uh, nevertheless, we're still looking at uh, that space, evaluating that allocation to see if we can improve diversification at all. Um, and I think uh, on a related basis, uh, as the Fed begins to unwind its balance sheet, it wouldn't be a surprise to see interest rates rise from here. Um, we think we have the appropriate uh, positioning within fixed income strategies that are less sensitive to interest rates that should buffer portfolios as well if we see that come to fruition. And the last thing that we're doing is 
with um, uh, regard to uh, portfolios at year end, we're always evaluating on a case by case basis where we can uh, be opportunistic about realizing gains, realizing losses to um, help minimize tax impact. That's all I have for the month of November. Thanks for listening and I'll see you next time.